Hi, my name is Art Fuel, and I'm a systems engineer with the Networking and Security Business Unit at VMware. And today I'll be walking through a installation of vRealize Network Insight 3.4 for the purpose of conducting a virtual network assessment. So first, what is a virtual network assessment? Well, vRealize Network Insight is a, a network management appliance, and it has a life cycle similar to your other infrastructure management appliances. And so normally, it's something you would, you would purchase and maintain over a life cycle. Uh, however, it, it is also available through what we call a virtual network assessment, which is a short-term installation, a temporary installation that you can do to provide a high-level overview um, and some important information about your vCenter environment and, and how your applications uh, operate today. And so if you look on the screen, you see things uh, on the upper right-hand corner here. This is a, some high-level metrics of the type of information that this tool and this assessment will provide. How much of your traffic in your environment flows from east-west or, or from virtual machine to virtual machine? How much is north-south or, or, or inbound? Or if you want to drill in which hosts in your environment are communicating with the internet and what ports and protocols and is there malicious traffic potentially in your environment? Um, another uh, key use for for this type of assessment and this type of app, uh, of tool is to tell you exactly what ports that applications communicate on. So if you have um, a, a desire to move towards zero trust, uh, if you have an application, for example, that you know it's a web server, it should be communicating on port 80 or port 443, you can monitor to ensure those are the only ports and then use that information to lock down the application to where it can only communicate on its known good ports, You know, also known as that zero trust security. Uh, and so, But before you do that, uh, you do have to be sure you know all the applications and all the ports that you need to have open. And often in IT, it's not just your web server, you have uh, antivirus, you might have security and monitoring agents, and you might have um, other other activities that happen in your environment, known good activities that you need to monitor and ensure before you're able to implement those um, those uh, policies. And, and this will actually go into to talk to your vCenter. Um, and learn exactly what traffic is actually happening in your data center. Okay, and now the installation itself installs in a few minutes. It's uh, two virtual appliance files, and so you basically run through a very standard wizard, simple wizard, to install the uh, tool itself. And most of that time is actually taken in uploading the uh, file. And so let's go over and, and go to the demo. And so I've saved, uh, for vRealize Network Insight, there's two virtual appliance files. So I'm sure you've worked with your VMware or, or VMware partner rep to uh, get the link to download these files. Download them and save them in a you know, location where you know you can upload them into your vCenter environment. So in this case I have a jump host uh, here that I'm on that has uh, direct access to upload these files to my vCenter. And I have my platform and I have my proxy OVA. And make sure that you, uh, you know where you'd like to deploy it. I have prepared a specific host with the appropriate um, uh, CPU and memory requirements to support this. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy an OVF template wizard. And we'll go ahead and select first our platform OVA. Now it is important to note, you have need to install the platform OVA before you begin to install the proxy OVA. So I'll go ahead and click next to validate. Next, we'll accept the license agreement. I'll pick a, a folder to host it. For standard VNA installations, we typically use the medium build. So that's, we'll select that, leave the default. And depending on your desire, I usually deploy this as thin provision in my lab environment. However, it is important to know if you are deploying this in a production environment, the hard drive will continue to grow while it continues to gather and log data. And so ensure that if you do do thin provision, you, you do have actual capacity for the hard drive to be able to go to its maximum size. Now, once the hard drive does hit its maximum capacity, it will overwrite. Um, and so it won't exceed past that point or error. But uh, you do need to ensure you do have capacity to get to the maximum if needed. Okay, and we'll select the appropriate network here for me. That is, let's see, this one. And then we'll click next. I'm going to go ahead and pause this while I type in my values. But as you can see, these are just the standard uh, wizard um, questions. So 
your IP address, your default gateway, DNS, and NTP information is all you need to deploy these. Okay, and once we've typed in these values, I'm going to go ahead and click Next and uh, check this box to power on after deployment. And I'll click Finish. Now once this is done, we can see here that it's initializing the deployment, and this will give us a current status here. Now after, and this is going to take, you know, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the, the, the speed of your connection. This is about a nine gigabit or gigabyte um, OVA file. And so during this process, it has to transfer that, that over. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this while it's uploading and I will resume uh, once this is completed. Okay, now we can see that our virtual appliance has finished deploying and is running. Um, once this has been running for a minute or two, we need to open up a web browser to the IP address that we deployed this to. So I actually open up the web browser and we need to enter your license key here. You should have received a license key from your VMware or uh, partner rep. And make sure if you don't have one, please uh, contact your rep to get a license key before you can proceed. Okay, and now you can see at this next screen my, my license validated. I put a, another small window here to cover my license key, but your screen should look essentially like this. You can go ahead and create an admin password and then click activate. I'm going to pause while I do that. Okay, and once we created our uh, password, you can get to the next page where you can generate the shared secret for the proxy. And we can go ahead and copy this. Go ahead and go back to my vSphere web client here. And I'm going to deploy the proxy OVA on this client here. We'll go ahead and we'll pick the proxy OVA. Click next to validate that. And click next. Accept the license agreement. Go ahead and pick a location or a folder. And we'll go ahead and leave the medium configuration selected. And again, I'm going to choose the thin provision. And select the appropriate network. And here we'll have uh, that shared secret, which we copied from the platform web interface. And then aside from that, we have essentially the same same information we enter your IP address, NetMask, DNS, and uh, domain and NTP server. So I'm going to pause this while I'm entering those values. Okay, I've entered my values. Go ahead and click next. And we'll turn this power on after deployment here and click finish. And uh, now we can see that that is deploying. We can again monitor the status here in the recent tasks. And if you go back to the web browser to the, to the uh, platform OVA here, you can see here that says uh, it's not yet detected and it's actively looking for the proxy. So once the proxy has booted, and is actually completely booted and loaded up all its services, this will change automatically and it will show that the proxy is detected. So right now, while I'll go ahead and pause this while the um, proxy is being deployed. Okay, I'm back in my vCenter environment and it looks like my proxy a virtual appliance has finished deploying. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over to my uh, web interface to the platform appliance. And we can see now it says proxy detected, click finish, so I'll click finish. We'll go ahead and the default username is admin at local. And you'll need to use the password that you created during installation. Okay. And the first thing that we'll do here, you get a choice whether you want to participate in this customer improvement program. Um, doesn't matter whether you choose for your preference, but uh, to connect, to start setting up the, the virtual network assessment, we need to go to add data source, and then on the upper right of this uh, page, we have this add new source, 
we will go ahead and select our vCenter. And it already knows the proxy address that we created. If it, that's not correct, then make sure that it is. I'll go ahead and I'll take the name of our vCenter here. It's IP address or domain name. And then use a valid uh, username so for this to log into vCenter. And the uh, this is mostly a read only account. However, we will you'll see in a second that we're going to enable NetFlow on the VMware distributed switch, the vSphere distributed switch in this environment. And so you do need the appropriate permissions for this account to turn on the NetFlow there. Uh, the specific um, permission levels that you need are documented uh, in the installation documentation. So I'll click validate to connect to vCenter. And once we're validated, we want to that we do need to ensure that we enable NetFlow. This is the primary um, vehicle that we have for our analysis. And uh, this will find the VDSs that exist in your vCenter that you're connecting it to. And so you can actually go in as well and select granularly which port groups. I'll just select them all. Now this nickname here, this is specific to this data source, right? So this data source is the vCenter we're connected to. You can nickname it what you'd like, but do keep in mind this uh, nickname is, is is for this data source. So I'm going to call this my vCenter. And we'll submit. And that's all that we need to do. At this point, we can come back to our homepage. And we'll see here, if we want to start running our analysis, we can go here to click Analyze. However, before you can run an analysis, you do have to gather an initial data connection of three to five hours before you'll be able to analyze any data. And after that point, it will show you uh, data as it collects it, but there is a need for an initial analysis period. And, um, and that's it for the installation. At this, uh, at this point, you can just come back after the amount of time you've worked with your uh, VMware or your partner rep to review the details. Thank you for joining.